Up next, a look at Horrified, the cooperative board game featuring the Universal Studio monsters. Uh, thanks, Ravensburger, for sending me a copy of Horrified to review. No other compensation was provided. Horrified was published in late 2019 by Ravensburger, designed by Prospero Hall, which is a name I'm starting to hear more and more often. I think that might, they may be a new up-and-coming designer or someone that's at least got a few new things coming out. I've seen that name quite a bit. Unfortunately, the artist is not credited anywhere I can find, which I got to say is a shame because I really dig the art style in this game. I was really disappointed that I didn't get to give a shout out there. Uh, it's a cooperative horror-themed game for one to five players with a playtime that could run from half an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the player count and the difficulty you choose to play at. Now, talking about the art, I think it's a bold and winning move that they didn't lean on their own film properties. Yes. And instead went with a great original art look. Uh, but let's talk about up first. What did you get in your copy of Horrified? All right, immediately upon opening the copy of Horrified, you're immediately thrown into immersion here because the first thing you are presented with is a warning. You know, the old school type that was common during the trailers of the classic horror movies. One that warns you that you may not want to continue and it's not for the faint of heart. I'm not going to quote it here, but I just thought this was a fantastic touch and a great way to put the players in the mood and they're in the right mindset. Now, this... Warning is on the back of the board, and after playing, every time I put the game away, I try to make sure I put that right side up so that someone at an event, if they open this box, is going to see that first. You know, it's a little touch, and it's certainly not something that's going to drive up the cost any meaningful way, but it adds a lot to the feel and mood. You know what you're getting into when you crack that box open okay. and see that on top. Now, the board is threefold and mounted, which is surprising because mounted boards aren't as common nowadays, but it's cool to see. It uh, depicts a town with a bunch of locations connected by roads and so on. Um, this has all your horror movie favorites, right? You've got the camp, the docks, the tower, the museum, the mansion, etc. cetera. Uh, there are some water locations, including the Black Lagoon and a couple spots, but those are only actually used if the creature from the Black Lagoon's in the game. Now, I have to say that not only do none of the locations feel extraneous, I also feel like it still has room to grow if they choose to add to it. Yeah, they could easily add on another board or something to the map or throw a sticker on top or expand well, they just, I mean, they only just, they even just need, they haven't used all the locations with overlays, so they That's could true. just add a monster with a new overlay, and yeah, there you go. Very easily. Uh, the instructions themselves are clearly written. Nice large text, thank you. Tons of examples, including actual pictures of gameplay components, which is something, for some reason, some people don't do, so it's good to see. I gotta say, this is actually one of the better rule books I've read recently, and this is written well enough. You could sit down, open the box in front of players for the first time, and basically read it out loud to be able to play, and you're gonna be playing in under half an hour. I, I wanna save 10 to 15 minutes, to be honest, but it, I didn't time myself, but it's definitely quick. Now on the downside, when I tried, the link that is supposed to lead you to a video tutorial for learning only brought me to the sales page for the game. So that was a big fail. Now, is this the same thing as that happened with Minecraft as the game wasn't actually released yet? Because uh, we did get a review copy. No, uh, no, as far as I'm aware, uh, Horrified is actually released. Yeah, it's definitely out there, okay. Because I know we did, we complained about this during our Minecraft and I didn't realize that Minecraft wasn't released until November uh, last weekend. So it's possible that that's what's happening here. But yeah, at the time, uh, we could not look at the actual, uh, the how to play video. Uh, under the rules, you got your cardboard punch boards. This has a bunch of items, character villager pawns, character boards, other various tokens. Uh, really nice thickness, nice solid thickness. Ridiculously well cut, punched easily. Stuff was literally falling out when I was unboxing it. Uh, the box itself has a cardboard box insert that's not fancy, but it worked well enough to separate the cards from everything else. Now, I can't recall, were there enough baggies in this one, or did you have to reach into your own stock? No, it's this is something new for Ravensburgers, from what I remember. I don't remember them coming with baggies before, but all their newer games have come with baggies. And there were enough baggies that I was trying to decide how to split it up, and I ended up splitting it up so there was a separate baggie for every monster. Now, I think I did have to use the baggie the dice were in for one of the monsters that didn't have a lot of components, but there was more than enough in there to make me happy. Excellent. Now, I did mention dice. The game comes with custom dice. Uh, these are D6s with three, like, explosion burst symbols representing a hit, an exclamation point that represents the monster doing a special action, two of those, and two blank sides. Uh, the monsters themselves are represented by unpainted but colorful miniatures. Uh, these are not cool mini or not. These are not hyper-detailed resin miniatures. They actually remind me of something that would come out of a plastic tube from a toy store. Uh, like, not army men level, but in between. 
Yeah, well, not highly detailed. There's really no question what they are, unless maybe you're in a hurry when unboxing them live on camera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're going a little too quick, you might miss it. Uh, there's a cloth bag that holds the item tiles when you play, and a large oversized card for each of the monsters. Uh, this is my first complaint. The cardstock on that is a little thinner than I would have liked. It's that terraforming Mars player board thickness that seems to be more and more common. It seems to be a thing. Um, for each of these, there's specific rules for the monster or pair of monsters when you're going to Frankenstein. And on the back, it's got all of the um, the rules for the setup. Now, I was actually just realizing that with that weight uh, for those for that that thin yep. cardstock we hate, and it's the same one they used in Minecraft. Yep. It's photo paper. I don't That's, know. It's 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 basically I I'm, I was just you know handling some earlier today in a printer, and it's the weight of my photo papers basically. So that seems to be what they've what they've gone with for some reason. So I agree that these monster cards are concerningly thin. Yeah. Uh, you put the game uh, game away fa too fast once, and you've got a crease you're never going to get rid of. Um, uh, if a, if you're going to get this to the table a lot, I definitely recommend laminating them. Yeah, I I would if you're if you're gonna keep if you laminators are one of those things every gamer doesn't know they need until they get one or they have a friend that has one. I I'm probably gonna laminate these assuming I keep the game around, which we'll keep going on about that. Uh, finally, there's a pack of cards. It's actually two decks. One's a monster deck that dictates how the monsters act, and then another is a set of perks, which are things of players that get special abilities. You get them. You can you start with one and you can get them by leveling up during the game by saving villagers. Overall, I was very impressed by the quality and even more so the look. Like I said, I, I'm I'm bummed that Ravensburger didn't credit the artist here. Maybe they used a team artist. I don't know. They used a studio. I don't know what it is, but the, the look of this game is great. The artwork is fantastic. It's all new, unique hand-drawn artwork for the town, the characters, and all the monsters. Everything is extremely clear to read and easy to see from even across the table. I have a big table. I can see stuff from across. The iconography used is extremely clear. Even the fact that the miniatures is a different color is tied and mechanically important during the game. For example, Dracula's board is red, like that thin board. The monster cards featuring Dracula's actions are red. The chits you put on the board for his coffins are red. All of the Dracula's icons show up in red and the miniatures red. Now, this is the one minor quibble I had with the game. Some of the strong theme in the game can easily be overlooked because of this color coding. Uh, while red does have a thematic th thread throughout, you end up thinking of them as red items and not, in this case, weapons. So, how does one play Horrified? All right, though it's not really evident from reading the rulebook, the main thing you are actually doing in a game of Horrified is moving around the town board collecting item tokens from various locations. They come in three colors, as Sean kind of indicated there. Each represents a specific type of tool for battling the monsters. Red tokens are all weapons, blue tokens represent science and study and technology, and yellow tokens represent religion and mysticism. Players are moving around the board trying to grab the right type of tools and use them in the right way, while also trying to protect and save innocent villagers. The way tools are used is completely dependent on which monsters are being featured in that game. And this is the neatest part of Horrified, as each monster requires players to collect tools of different types or from different places and use them in unique ways to make the monsters vulnerable and then eventually to drive the monsters away. Now, players win if they're able to drive off the monsters. They lose if the terror level in the town gets too high. The main way this goes up is when a villager or character is defeated by a monster. Players can also lose if they run out of cards in the monster deck. Now, a nice thing to note here, player death is just a setback until that terror level gets too high. Citizens, on the other hand, don't get called back from beyond. Yeah, if a player dies, you just start up the next turn in the hospital. Nice and simple. Now, I get into a lot more detail about the mechanics of the game over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com in the full review. Um, I talk about all the different player actions you can take and more. But we've already talked about this game on the show a couple times in the last week, so I'm just going to stick to the short version here. Basically, you're going to get a number of actions based on what character you're playing. One of those actions is unique based on the character. In addition, there's common actions that... Uh, everyone has, and then special actions based on what monsters. After all the players have used their actions, or after each player, sorry, after a player has done their actions for the turn, the monsters activate, and that's based on that monster deck. Monsters' attacks are using the special dice. Players can defend themselves by discarding items. Villagers, though, unless they're defended by a character, are taken out in one hit. Uh, so did you want to comment on the turn length problem you had with this game? I'd, I still am not happy about that. 
one of the things in the game is every character has a different number of actions. One of the characters only has three, one has five, the average is four. And I just don't like the fact that different players are going to have longer or shorter turns based on what character they got randomly. It just seems odd to me that someone will get to play the game more than someone else. Now, it's done to compensate for the player powers. The person who only has three actions can move anywhere on the board with one action. So they don't have to spend turns moving. So I get it. And the player who has five has no special ability, so they get five actions. And I get that as a balance issue, but I don't like the fact that sitting at the table, if Deanna, me, and Sean are playing, Sean may get to play the game more than I do because his character has more actions on it. Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I disagree. And I know, I believe Deanna, who played the the three three action character uh, that first play, didn't necessarily agree. But it's definitely a valid, I think it's definitely yeah. a valid uh, concern. Uh, now, one thing I just want to point out, uh, we're here, Prospero Hall is a team. Uh, so it is actually a design okay. studio. And the reason that they aren't accrediting the artist is they are internal to the Prospero Hall team. Oh, there we go. Okay. And that's probably why I'm seeing the name show up more and more because they're probably a development team that's been used multiple times. Uh, yeah, and so they're they, they're on uh, Villainous and yep. Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, for instance. That's the one I think I saw them on. All right, so actually beating monsters is completely unique. How you do this is unique. Every monster is going to require you to collect tools. That's what you do in this game. You move around and collect tools. It's what you do with them that changes. For example, the Invisible Man, you need to collect items from specific locations around the map and then bring them to the police precinct. Now, thematically, this represents gathering evidence of the Invisible Man's existence. Once you have enough evidence, you help the police capture the monster. Now, when you're capturing the monster, though, you're going to need red tools, which represent weapons to be able to defeat him. Now, every monster is like that. Well, it, you need to do one thing to make them vulnerable and then another thing to defeat them. And it's usually different combinations of tools. Now, what this means is playing against every monster makes the game feel different. And again, really deeply linked thematic ideas, but they can also be simplified for better or worse. And you need to go get this color with this number. Yeah. <laughs> now, I first broke out horrified at our extra late charity gaming event. I actually punched the game, read the instructions for the first time at the event just before playing. That is how quick this game can be to get to the table and how great the instructions are for helping you get it to the table quickly. Yeah, now my first play was just a couple of days later. Uh, and I had flipped through the rule book in advance, but just from doing that, I felt pretty confident and uh, we jumped right in. Now that first game was with uh, four players and we had the two suggested starting monsters. That went really well. Now, since then I played in a number of different player counts with different sets of monsters and different monster counts. Now at this point, one of the things I will say is that the two monster game is going to be too easy for most groups. Sure, use it when first teaching the game, but move on to three as soon as possible. Now, I gotta say four monsters seem pretty much impossible at this point, but it is something I'm planning to try to win someday. I do uh, completely agree about two monsters. They indicate it, it's a starting point, and that's really all it is. It's how you teach the game or even learn the game and then never use monsters, yeah. two monsters again, even if you're teaching it to other people because mm -hmm. it might drive you crazy as someone who's familiar with the game. That's true. And I'll get to that when we get to our week in review. Now, what I really love about Horrified is how the overall feel of the game changes based on what monsters you face. The designer did a, or design team, I guess, did a fantastic job of making each monster unique. I really dig how the theme is integrated. Yes, you're just collecting red, yellow, and blue chips, but it makes sense that you would need weapons to fight off Dracula's Misnians, the first part of his quest, and then mystic items to drive him home. And even the names of the items are actually tied to where you get them. For example, the torches and pitchforks are easy to pick up at the barn, but the only place you're going to find a pistol is the police precinct. Now, I've only had it on the table twice, but I agree the monsters behave differently, and the aspects of the game you're focusing on are quite different with each arrangement, especially when it comes to things like forgetting the creature moves through water so mm. it has shorter paths, or the Frankenstein monsters not meeting is more important than just about anything else. Now, the cooperative aspect of Horrified leads me to its biggest potential problem I can see with some gaming groups. This is a cooperative game where all information is open, and every turn, every player can see all of the options open to every other player, and that leads itself to quarterbacking. A player with dominant personality can take over the group or end up playing the game for one or more players. 
Now, this isn't a problem unique to Horrified. It's very common in other cooperative games like Pandemic, but it's something I want people to be aware of before buying this game. Yeah, the three of us, um, Mo, D, and myself, are all pretty strong gamers, and it was immediately obvious that had it not been the case, it would have been all too easy to sit back and ride along in the wake of the others. Yeah. One, on the plus side, the fact that we were all so involved really says something positive about the game. Overall, I gotta say, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. I've had a great time playing this game every time it's hit the table. I love the asymmetric nature of the game and the way it changes, both how the game feels and how it plays, depending on what monsters are in play. While it might seem easy only facing two universal monsters, the real tension in the fun of the game comes out when you face three or probably four, though there's no way you're going to win. If you beat it on four, let us know. For a more in-depth look at Horrified, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.